Hey, welcome to Tabletop Skirmish Games. I'm Lee, and in this video, we'll be taking our first look at some of the abilities and fighter cards for the Dark Oath Savages. It's been a great week of information for Warcry Red Harvest, and as we approach the pre-order day, which is this Saturday, we're getting another article, and this time it's going to give us some sneak peeks and our first look at some of the fighter cards and abilities for the Dark Oath Savages. We've already seen some great images for this warband, and they just look fantastic. Some real interesting characters really playing in to the whole Warcry vibe. The Sorceress is just amazing, and we've even seen the sprues up close so we know exactly what we're getting. But in this video, we're going to just focus on these new fighter cards that have been released and some of the abilities as well. Let's get started with our leader for the Dark Oath Savages, which is the Slaughterborn. And this guy's a great sculpt, a really good model. I believe there's going to be some alternate ways you can have his left arm so he doesn't have to be holding those heads. But we really need to examine those sprues a little bit more just to confirm that. But he looks great. And as someone pointed out in one of the comments, he seems to be wearing different things from different warbands. So that belt buckle looks like something from the Signs of the Flame. And then all the different adornments all over him could well be from those warbands too. So really nice touch if they've done that. And um, I, yeah, I think that's a really great idea. But here's his card. And he's going to come in at 170 points. So it's not a huge amount of points for a leader. He's only got the one room mark, that's the leader room mark, but of course he does have the faction room mark as well. So he's going to get his faction abilities and the leader abilities. He's got a movement four, a toughness four, and he can take 20 wounds. And then for his weapons, he's got a range of one with that big sword. He can make five attacks, strength four, and he's going to deal two damage on a regular hit and five on a critical hit. So movement four, we're definitely expecting that. Toughness, I might have expected a five, but then he hasn't got any real armor and he hasn't got a shield. So I think four is fair enough to represent what we can see from the model. Being able to take 20 wounds, that's really nice. But it's those five attacks I think are really good. Um, strength four is okay. So we can make five attacks, strength four, and then we're gonna deal quite a bit of damage. Just two on a regular hit and five on a critical hit. So, you know, two crits, Rolling those fives, you're going to be able to take out a lot of the weaker, lower point fighters. And then if you can get lucky and get a few hits out of those five rolls, or even make two attacks in your one activation, you've certainly got a chance of doing some serious damage to some of the tougher, bigger fighters as well. We didn't get to see what the leadership rune mark will bring him, so we don't know what ability he's going to get from that. But we do see the Dark Oath Savage's faction abilities, and the first one is a double, so we know he can use this. And this is called a Vow Fulfilled. And until the end of this fighter's activation, each time an enemy fighter is taken down, you can pick either this fighter's toughness characteristic, or the attacks or strength characteristic of one weapon this fighter is armed with. Until the end of the battle, we can add one to the characteristic you picked. This sounds awesome, and I love how they're playing with the abilities a bit and just mixing it up somewhat. So we saw with the Tarantulas Brood how the, some of the abilities weren't ones we were familiar with, and now this one's really great. So I like this. So you want to get this guy straight away to take out an enemy fighter. And then once we've done that, we can then add one to either the toughness characteristic, the attacks, or the strength characteristic. And that's for the rest of the battle. So if you can get him in nice and early in the first round, take someone out, you could increase any of those. So, I mean, for me, I'd be tempted to go strength, but I like rolling those dice. So I might even be looking at having six attacks instead of five and being able to do two to five on a crit. I think that'd be pretty good. So that's awesome. I'm really liking this and it's a double. And because it's only got the faction room mark here, it looks like all the fighters in the warband are going to be able to use that. So this is really great. He'll also have access to this quad called Death Blow. And here we add the value of this ability to the damage points allocated to enemy fighters by each hit or critical hit from the next attack action made by this fighter, this activation, that has a range characteristic of three or less. These aren't my favorite types of quads. And with this, it's only for the next attack action during this activation. And um, you can certainly use it because his range characteristic is three or less. So that's no problem. Um, but yeah, not a brilliant quad, I don't think, for these. I think they could have done something a bit more interesting. But still, if we can get five or six here for this quad, we can add that to every hit or critical hit. Now, if he's already got five or potentially six 
attack dice to roll, there's a good chance he's getting some hits and crits in there as well. So I think for him, it could be a good quad to use, you know, as long as you're rolling a lot of dice. But if you're using it on some of the other fighters that we haven't seen yet, and they've only got a low characteristic for their attacks, then that's not going to be a great quad. So I think this is one you definitely want to use with a fighter with, with a high attack characteristic like this guy here. We also got to see another fighter in this article, and this is the Sorceress. And I love that they've added this into the warband. We've got all these big, like, Conan, Barbarian-style fighters, these big tough guys. But then we've got a pretty mean-looking Sorceress thrown in as well. As we've talked about in other videos, she's got no eyes. They've been plucked out, but she's holding one up so she can see through that too. So I think that's just great. And she's got all sorts of bones, and I love how there's lots of bird skulls on all of these models they look really great the rune stone hanging from her belt and she's even got some runes carved into her leg there so i think as sorceresses go this one's fantastic and could well be one of my favorite sorcerers from warcry so far but here's the card that comes with her so the fighter card is 115 point value she's got the faction rune mark and she's got the mystic rune mark so we are going to get an ability just for her the movement is three the toughness is three and she can only take 12 wounds so she's not going to move fast at all looks pretty old so i guess that makes sense and toughness yeah they're not going to be tough but it's the weapons now so let's have a look at those so this is typical of most mystics we've got this kind of magical ranged weapon which is a minimum of three inches and a maximum of seven we can make two attacks strength three and we're going to deal three on a regular hit six on a crit so this is pretty pretty standard for these mystic um, figures these sorcerers and then we've got up close if we get close enough we've got a weapon range of one with the dagger we can make three attacks strength three dealing one to three on a crit so you're not going to do a huge amount of damage here and really it's the abilities that i think bring these kind of mystics to life so let's check that out now and the mystic ability here is a double called visions of glory and for this we roll a number of dice equal to the value of this ability for each five to six, you gain one additional wild dice that can be used from the start of the next battle round. Again, this is really nice. They're playing around with it. I don't recall this from any other factions, actually. So this is really good. For every five or six, you're going to get an additional wild dice. And you can use it from the start of the next battle round. And I guess then you can use it for any of the battle rounds going forward after that. So this is pretty good. I mean, you're going to want a five or six value for your ability. And then you roll five or six dice and for every five to six you're going to gain that additional wild dice so that's pretty nice so she's really going to bulk up those others and if we can get those extra wild dice in we can really get lots of doubles going on i imagine there's real potential for that and then with that double ability we've already seen you can really get those others going in the warband in the in the second round and then really get them pushing forward in the first round weakening the enemy, get them to take out the enemy early on, and then they could make use of a double to increase their stats for the rest of the game. So yeah, I really like this. She's going to play that supportive role, keep her out of harm's way, let her use that double um, every round potentially and get those wild dice up. I think this could be pretty fun. And then if you wanted to, she's also going to have that double vow fulfilled and quad death blow as well. So probably wouldn't be too bad an idea if she could use Val for Phil, but the chance of her taking one out, an enemy fighter, pretty slim, unless you let the other fighters weaken them, let her come in and do the finishing blow and then use Val for Phil to get those attacks up. So that'd be nice. If she can make three attacks at range three to seven, that'd be a lot better. It was great we got to see another card in that article, and that's for this guy, who's a really great looking miniature again, and he's going to come in at 75 points. He's got a movement 4, a toughness 4 because of that shield, and he can take 10 wounds. He's got an attack range of 1, and he's going to make 2 attacks with his sword, strength 4, and deal 1 to 3 on a crit. So for 75 points, we're not expecting a lot ever at this kind of level, but a toughness 4 and strength 4 isn't too bad at all. Only two attacks, though, and we are already going to deal one or three on a crit. So not a huge damage output. But I think they could certainly hold up. They're pretty tough. And um, taking 10 wounds is always nice for a 75-point fighter. And he does have that faction rune mark, so he's going to have access to the abilities too. So here, I think the quad death blow is not going to be great for him. I wouldn't imagine using it with them to be fair. But the double valve fulfilled, again, really good for all of them. If you can get his attacks up to three, um, that's going to be pretty nice. 
Then we also saw this fighter called the Proven, and they're really pairing them up with this quad in the article. So it'd be interesting to see how many attacks they can make. Uh, the strength's got to be high. I've got to be thinking five for strength, perhaps, with this double-handed axe. I mean, that's a beast of an axe. And so if we can use that quad with it, then I think that's going to be pretty awesome. And that's pretty much all the fighters now and all the abilities we got to see in today's article. I'm looking forward to seeing what that leader ability is and seeing how um, that will affect the leader and, and what he does and the kind of narrative of the warband. So can't wait for that. But really happy from what we've seen here. The sorceress who's called a god speaker is really great. And yeah, I like that mystic ability and how we can get some extra wild dice. I love how they've played around with that. And so that's really great. And also for our other fighters, I'm really liking that double. I think we can really do something with that. So overall, really impressed. And I'm liking what I've seen with this warband. But what do you think about what we've seen for the Dark Oath Savages? Are you happy with the direction they're going in? Have you got a favourite ability? And do you prefer them or the Tarantulas Brew? Let me know in the comments. It'd be great to hear what you think. If you'd like to see the fighter cards and abilities we've got for the Tarantulas Brood so far, then that video is up on the channel already, so you can check that out. There's also a video you can see where I've gone into the contents of the Red Harvest box, really looking at the sprues and the contents page of the book so we know exactly what to expect. And I recently did a video looking at all the prices and just seeing if the Red Harvest set is good value for money. So there we go, can't wait for this. The box set's going to be available to pre-order this Saturday and I wonder if we're going to get any more articles tomorrow before the release. Also, I wonder if we're going to get any thing to entice us to buy it from Games Workshop as we saw with the Octarius set and Dominion where there was some tokens and those metal gauges for Octarius so wait and see I've got mine ordered with my local store so hopefully there'll be some goodies to pick up along with that as that's a really good place to get it because you do get some cool stuff with Octarius we've got those dog tags and card protectors and Dominion got some really nice stuff too so we'll wait and see but for now thanks so much for watching Please like if you like it, subscribe for more videos like this, and don't forget to hit the notification bell to join me next time on Tabletop Skirmish Games. If you like this kind of content and would like to support the channel, then please check out my Patreon page, and thanks to everyone who's joined so far. It's really awesome. We hang out on Discord, talk about the hobby, share ideas, and help each other out, and you'll get some perks there that you're not going to find anywhere else. So I'll put a link in the description, and it'll be great to see you there.